there is a, a surveillance camera about every 18 meter along the path from my office to my home. And this is fairly typical for any British city. There is lots of surveillance cameras and most of them don't really work. Many of them are broken. Many of them are actually put so high up that anybody wearing a big hairdo or a hat can hide quite well from them. The real surveillance is, of course, all the people around with cell phones who at a uh, drop of a hat can in instantly start imaging you and what you're doing. So the old picture of surveillance was a big brother watching you from above. And then we have the surveillance concept of, well, everybody uh, can grab you and put you on Facebook. And uh, in many ways, um, these ones are not exactly balancing each other. They're doing very different things. So the surveillance cameras looking down on us are actually supposed to enforce a social, social behavior. Or we should behave ourselves because otherwise we might be held accountable. But then we have, of course, the recording of what we're doing. We put it online. We want to express ourselves, but we also do it in a network fashion. We actually observe what other people are doing. The little old lady watching from her window is in many ways just as a uh, strong force to, of social conformity as any amount of spooky surveillance cameras. But the difference between surveillance cameras and the little old lady is that the little old lady, she can gossip with her neighbors. But the surveillance camera can put stuff online in a big database that can be stored absolutely forever. And we're right now undergoing a kind of transparency revolution. It's a bit like a mist that is slowly clearing out. And suddenly you can see extremely far, although it's a continuous change. The interesting thing is the future can see us and we cannot see the future. We don't know what people are going to be valuing or thinking about in the future, but they're going to have records of what we were doing and can probably infer quite a lot of what we think is secret right now. We are completely naked in front of the future. Which can be a bit scary, of course, because the future might not necessarily be very nice and it might not necessarily hold down our values. So we already seen situations where teachers have been outed as having a past uh, in pornography and they lost their jobs. That was something they did years ago and they might indeed have changed as a person. But suddenly the, the young uh, uh, person doing pornography and the adult teacher get conflated. We have different sides of uh, our lives, what we do on our spare time and what we do professionally, but might also get conflated. The problem is, of course, human identity is multifaceted. We have several personas. We're different people in different uh, contexts, and it's kind of important to sometimes keep them apart. Sometimes it's uh, the protection of whistleblowers or critics of society. Sometimes it's just that your professional persona as a lawyer or a journalist should be kept uh, separate from who you are on the pub. And right now our technology tends to bundle it all together. And, and uh, Zuckerberg at Facebook said that, oh, anybody who uses several identities on the uh, internet is lacking in integrity. He's completely wrong. Actually, integrity is about managing your different identities. But right now we're creating technology that makes that very hard. And this is a bit of a problem. Our technology is not so much outrunning our sense of identity as we're designing the wrong technology for our identities. And this is going to continue. We're going to be negotiating a lot of this. Uh, uh, and it's going to be very difficult ground to get through in the near future. So on one hand, we're getting these amazing data collecting abilities and data mining that can figure out stuff that uh, one, we can't even imagine about ourselves. After all, everything we do um, might contain innocuous signals that each on their own doesn't tell you very much about me, but put together can actually give high probability estimates about my inner beliefs, my preferences, and what I'm up to, which I might definitely not want to get out there. And right now, of course, we say, oh, it's Big Brother, it's the big uh, intelligence agencies and the big companies that have this capability. But of course, these capabilities are software. Software is getting cheaper and easier to use, and I think we're soon going to see it as part of Facebook and the everyday life, that people will be able to do data mining on a grand scale too. Which might, of course, be rather sinister because the little old lady might have very uh, particular religious views and she might be very uh, interested in enforcing them in the neighborhood. And she's going to get empowered by this. As well, of course, as a lot of other people. So again, we might see a lot of very interesting and risky conflicts here in the neighborhood about uh, what, what uh, standards of behavior should we have. And the real problem is they can go global. So that little neighborhood dispute well, then it might end up on a mayor blog, it might end up on YouTube, and suddenly several million people get involved. Which is also a problem because we evolved in a world where we knew about a hundred other people. We didn't meet very many people. Attention was very scarce, so having a lot of friends was nice, 
now we can get thousands of friends on Facebook. But also if we do, you know, do something bad and it ends up on YouTube, we can get a million people who hate us. And that social pressure, we haven't evolved to handle that. We don't know how to handle when a million slightly outraged people you know, point their fingers at us. It's a kind of random process too, because people do outrageous and nasty stuff all the time. It's only a few that end up on top of the list of this week's villain. And sometimes it's the right people. And sometimes it's just the Star Wars kid who does something in his own backyard, gets filmed and suddenly turns into an internet meme. Do you think people will care as much in the future about being watched? Um, do you think people will, do you think people's attitudes will change? I think people's attitude to privacy changes all the time. We tend to forget right now that uh, just a hundred years ago, most people were living in small villages where everybody knew everybody and could figure out what they're up to. And then we moved into the big anonymous industrial city and the concepts of alienation showed up. Suddenly you were around people who you didn't know and you didn't know much about. But at the same time, that was also liberating because you could do stuff you would never dare doing in the little village. Many of us would, uh, are very happy to be able to do stuff that uh, our mothers never find out about. But that might change again. And I think we're rather plastic. We adopt uh, our privacy norms quite a lot to our surroundings. But it's also a bit of a negotiation. At a restaurant, uh, you're not supposed to listen to uh, the conversation of other people. And you're not really supposed to be talking too much on a cell phone except setting up meetings for other people who are coming to the restaurant. So we invented those norms. We choose what to not pay attention to. And that works in general fairly well. If people don't follow it, we frown at them. The problem happens, of course, when norms change to, uh, can't change fast enough. The technology changes, the situation changes, and we find that our old norms don't work and we haven't figured out new ones. And that's going to cause a lot of anxiety. I think uh, many uh, more uh, traditional societies are going to suffer it even more. Because there you had a normal traditional village society and suddenly the cell phones arrive and they're linked into a global transparent society which both has opinions about what they're locally doing. After all, the international news media have been condemning, for example, village courts in Pakistan for their traditional judgment quite intensely over the past few years. And the village courts suddenly find themselves criticized by people they never even heard about. Conversely, of course, they're going to see these weird people they never heard about who are doing outrageous and weird things. So it's not just that we're in, uh, changing our privacy. We're also doing it inside a suddenly very big world, a big global world with a lot of subcultures that don't, don't even make sense to us. So this renegotiation is going to be quite turbulent. I think it's going to shape quite a lot of the, the politics and the culture of the next few decades. And meanwhile, of course, a lot of other technologies are also going to be advancing and churning this soup even more.